Hi, my friends. Hello. I hope wherever you are, in you are in great spirits and great health. And uh, as we continue our stories, our histories, and our story of of uh, uh, the Persians and the Achaemenid Empire and the encounter of the Greeks and the Persians, right? That's 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 the stage that we are middle of the first century BCE. I have already brought you um, for close to fifteen hundred. Um, a millennia and a half, we have all covered a millennia and a half of history together and, and you are so much the richer for it. And I, I, I know that we're dealing with a lot of people's comings and goings in Western Asia at, you know, at, at this important juncture of our history, right? And, and it, it might get a little bit too overwhelming, but I just want you to know that you know, once you review the material one more time, everything by by your uh, by 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 the uh, finals, right? Um, you would this all would really really uh, sort of quote unquote sink in, yeah, my friends. And I want you to remember that already. You know, we are coming across all these names and and stuff. I want you to remember that you already know in the modern period. Uh, most of you can count the 195 countries and cultural zones, so to speak, that we have in our contemporary period, right? From the French to in the, the Indonesians to the Congolese to the um, to the Iranians to the Greeks to the um, to the uh, Caribbeans to uh, you know uh, Brazilians to um, Mexicans to you know you name it right we have all of this already in our memory right in order to complete this right in order to figure out what it was that got us to this place right um, we are now dealing with an age of empires we are now dealing with an age that people could easily come under the well easily uh, rather easily, yes, come under the sway of an empire that was the greatest empire that the world had seen up to then, right? We're dealing, we have, as you have seen, we have been dealing in the second millennium with greater and greater land-based empires. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now one of these empires, right, is the Achaemenid Empire that we uh, we have dealt with. We know already that by the time of Cyrus the Great, right, 550 uh, to 530 BCE, right, i.e. we are still in the archaic period of Greek history, right, and we are dealing with an empire that is expanding, right? And, and is bringing more and more populations under its sway and under its control. So it is by, that by, the, time of the, by the time of Cyrus the Great, you see, we have already gone into Central Asia, yeah? into what is now Afghanistan. Uh, close to uh, well and and Pakistan, close to the borders of India, into Central Asia, right, covering Armenia, all of Anatolia, and of course coming and taking over Lydia, right, and beginning to mint coins in Lydia, right, and of course taking over these uh, Greek city states. I mean, Greek colonies that were around the Ionian, uh, uh, in the Ionian uh, region of Anatolia, right? So this was the extent of the um, Achaemenid Empire. It already comes uh, in contact, well, the, I mean, it has already come with uh, 
in contact with a lot of people, right? But it also comes into contact with the Greeks, right? Um, and and takes over all the all the previous empires, right? The Babylonian Empire, um, the Assyrian Empire, and so on and so forth, right? So um, so by the time we get to the son of Cyrus, right, and he is Cambyses, you know, and he comes right after his father from 530, but he rules for a short period of time, only eight years, right? He sets his sights on Egypt, right, and in fact goes and also conquers Pharaonic Egypt, right? Um, the Greek sources, right, it all, uh, depict him as a cruel and impious madman, right? The African, the, the Egyptian sources, um, contemporary sources, right, show him like his father, Cyrus the Great, right, cultivating local priests and notables and and the respective traditions of the native of the of, of the Egyptians of native traditions of the Egyptians, right? Uh, so and then once Cambyses takes over Egypt, right? Then comes Dari, Darius, right? So there's three kings that I want you, four kings. Cyrus, Cambyses, Darius, and as we'll see, Arta, Xerxes. Those of you who have been listening very carefully to my, uh, to my previous talks, yeah, my friends, um, those of you who are who are getting hundreds and nineties and eighties and there are many of you and I thank you um, very much uh, for devoting enough time. I'm sure if my other lovely ones devote equal times, they will also get eighties and nineties and hundreds, right? Okay. So my friends, so uh, after uh, th those of you who have listened, remember that I when I was when we were talking about um, the Egyptian concept of um, right and justice, right? I also talked about the the Indo-Aryan, Indo-European. I mean, in the Iranian concept of justice, and that was Arta, right? So you already know that, um, well, the, the one of these Achaemenid kings is carrying this concept of justice, and the question is why, and then we get to the Iranian religions, and we will talk about it. Okay, so after um, Cyrus comes, Cambyses comes, Cambyses takes over Egypt, right? You have to remember, like, you, taking over regions means integrating their economies within your own economy, right? It means, usually, as in modern day, means uh, getting access to the resources of these regions, right? Whether it be, be it gold or, or, or silver or, or uh, you know, craftsmen, uh, and artistic traditions, it, everything comes into contact, right, my friends? So anyway, so um, here comes, uh, after Cambyses uh, comes Darius, right? And it is here that, um, that uh, the uh, Greco-Persian wars begin, right? After which, after which, as I uh, mentioned now a number of times, after which Greek identity takes shape. Mm. Uh, so, if, if you will, right, the Greek identity only took shape basically what one of the major um, sort of, of forces confronting, confronting it was the Persian identity. And the Greeks, right, uh, made of the Persians the other, right, the barbaroi, right? Now we understand, now we understand that this uh, would, 
you know, this is a majorly, majorly skewed um, sort of image that the Greeks have left for us. And one of the reasons that had it not been for the for for the for for the inscriptions and for the um, for the religious sort of oral lit, uh, oral traditions that have been handed down primarily through the religious tradition in the Iranian world, right? Um, we would have not not known, and of course, art and architecture, right? We would have not known what uh, what would have been, you know, um, the real the real persons behind the image that the, that the uh, Greeks are presenting uh, to us of these people, right? Um, okay, so uh, Darius, but with, when, when this is Cambyses, remember we saw all of this, Cambyses uh, appearing as pharaohs of Egypt, right? And then with Darius, right? We come with, to Darius and it is after the rule, I mean, towards the end of the rule of Darius, right? And the Greek classical age begins. Why, why, when, when, and they, that is when the encounter begins, right? Cyrus had already encountered the Greeks in the Ionian, um, Ionian parts of Anatolia, right? Um, and, and, um, and, but, 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 but Darius, right, um, goes into what, um, our, even modern historians would like to consider Europe, right, i.e. Thrace, right, uh, meaning, um, northeastern Greece, basically, right, and, and the way the, the, the your your readings depicts it is that uh, uh, Darius gained the foothold in Europe, right? Because already we know Greece is Europe, right? Anyway, so but the, Darius comes, right, and and he erects a string of forts in Thrace, well, uh, yeah, by five hundred BCE, right? They come at the doorstep of the Greeks, and this is a relief of Darius the <clears throat> first, right? So Darius comes <clears throat> and takes over the Thra Thra Thracian world, right? And it is on the footsteps of the Greeks, right? Which are like uh, busy building their, their um, city set state, um, cultural traditions, Right, um, for the most part, Greek, Greek, right, but also each being different from the other, right. So that, for instance, the Spartans were very much, um, very much different than than the Athenians, for instance, during the um, in the in the Greek civilization, for instance. Okay, so Darius comes into contact with the uh, with the Greeks, go goes and um, takes over. So by the time that the um, well, I mean this is the Persian Wars actually, right? Takes takes. I mean, you know, there are two major uh, sort of four nineties under Darius and four eighties. Under um, Xerxes, did I tell you Arthur Xerxes? Uh, that that is that is we are not getting there. Darius and then Xerxes, my friends. There is a king called Arthur Xerxes in the Achaemenid um, thing, but after Darius comes Xerxes, not Artaxerxes. I forgive me, and I apologize, my friends. Okay, so then, um, so then, um, and and for two two major sort of um, periods of war, four nineties under Darius and four eighties 
under Xerxes, but in general the skirmishes and Persian involvement in Greek affairs, right, as you recall, continues, right, so that from 499, for basically half a century, you have these burst Persian wars, the Greeks having to deal with the Persians one way or the other. For one thing, after the Persian Wars, right, uh, when the, the Greeks begin to, uh, to construct their Delian League, right, the Spartans begin to, to, to form their own uh, League and there is a long war, the Peloponnesian War, Peloponnesia, yeah, um, Peloponnesian War, um, that occupies the, um, the the Spartans against the Athenians and the, the and the and the Delian League. Right, and it is the remember uh, the the Persian king that makes the Persian peace, right, and that has been uh, also involved in in uh, in in the Peloponnesian Wars um, of um, of um, the Greeks amongst themselves. Just to give you the precise dating of the Peloponnesian Wars, my friends, right, so Peloponnesian Wars basically beginning right after, um, yeah, the, the end of the um, Persian involvement in, uh, but Persian Greek encounter, right, the Peloponnesian Wars takes place from 435, right, 431 to 405 BCE, like mainly, you know, three, three decades, right, and is ended with Persian inter in, in, in intercession, right, um, and um, Persian intercession and Persian peace, right, uh, and it has been subs subsidized actually the Spartans have been subsidized by the Persians throughout the war right um, so um, and, and, and and as you can see this is this is the the uh, sort of the formation of the Peloponnesians right it's not like it just does not involve um, you know the Athenians against the Spartans it involves um, uh, you know, other Greeks and Greek colonies, right, um, uh, and, and Spartan colonies, right, it is a major internal struggle that takes place, um, uh, that takes place after the, uh, right, so 431 to 404, 431, to 404, my friends, right, um, is the Peloponnesian Wars, right, and the Spartan League against the Delian Leagues, ending with the Persian um, sort of intercession, right? So, um, so therefore, when you see the Achaemenid Empire, right, um, during the, the during da, Darius and Xerxes' realm, right, um, you see, you see the extent of their control, right? I mean, they also have control over the northern Black Sea, right? I, I wish you to, to pay attention, right? All of, all of Anatolia, right, um, a, a great part of Arabia, not not inter not central arabia right um egypt and and nubia as we remember right and so on and so forth under the uh, the darius the, the great and xerxes's rule right so darius when he comes to egypt actually uh, 
Okay, so as I told you, one of the uh, one of the issues that we are dealing with here is trade, right? I mean, trade is becoming more and more involved, right? Um, and Western Asia and Africa are are now connected, right, to the Indus Valley civilization, to um, the well, not so much to the Chinese yet, but certainly to the Indus Valley civilization, right? And in Americas, we have our civilizations developing independently, right? In 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 um, Americas, and you will be reading it in your um, in your um, readings. I hope, right? Even if I have not assigned it, I I hope you follow up on the development of the Americas also. Um, the only reason, I mean, we are, we are already dealing with a lot and since the development in Americas is not really that much connected to what is happening in West, is isolated from what is happening in Western Asia and Africa, we are not dealing with it that much. But, uh, but um, Going back to our story, right, when Darius comes to Egypt, he thinks, yeah, because he were, he's talking, he's thinking about networks of trade and communications, right, already, already, um, they have connected, um, right, um, the, the centers of their empire, right, important centers of their empire, and this is, you know, um, Persia part, uh, with Persepolis, right? We will get to that and you will see a video about it. Uh, Elam, Persepolis, Elam, and Ekbatana, i.e. Media, and Babylonia being the, the centers of the rule going from one capital to the other capital, right? And they have connected. They have connected these extensive parts of the world. They have, con they have constructed a road, one of the major parts of which connects Susa to Sardis, i.e. very close to um, Ionia, right? They, and, and, and we will talk about the Persian administration um, in a second. But, but, um, but since trade was a major, ha was becoming a greater and a greater concern for the societies that are developing and cultures that are developing in this part of the world, right? Um, so when Darius comes to Egypt and sees, oh my God, you know, here we are in, uh, like, you know, we are in Africa, we have control over Eastern Mediterranean, right? We are in Africa, we have control over the Red Sea, right? Uh, we want to sort of get access and con connect to, you know, we want to have a, a sea route connection as well, Right. Don't forget that the, the, the wars of the Persians and the Greeks were actually naval wars right? that, are, that is taking place. So, so the Achaemenids have become very, very comfortable, although their fleets were destroyed and whatnot during the wars, right? they, are, they have become you know, uh, very savvy about the ships and na naval uh, naval matters in the ma in the Mediterranean, right? And as I said, because of the the control that even the Achaemenids, greater control that they came to have on Persian Gulf, my friends, right? Um, they um, they they already became a. Uh, very ad uh, very adept yeah very successful in uh, n naval constructions and and uh, taking control over the waterways of the Persian Gulf and the uh, and the Arabian Sea right so um so when the rice came comes to Egypt he says oh um what if I connected with the Mediterranean uh, to the Red Sea, wouldn't it be more com so much more easier to to you know to connect and to network, right? So he orders the original version of what we ultimately came to know as one of the important straits. Remember, my friend, of the world, right? Uh, and that was the Suez Canal, and he came to construct a, con a, a maritime route, right, between the Il Indus 
um, del- uh, I mean the the delta, right? Um, um, to the re- Red Sea, the, the delta of um, delta of the Nile, right? Delta of the Nile to the sea, Red Sea, not Indus. I don't know where I get the Indus there from. Okay, my friends. I mean, I don't know where. It, um, thinking about the Indus while writing about the Nile. Okay, um, and and he completed the canal linking the Red Sea uh, um, with the Nile, right? And um, when the so but but but. But the, what we know of the Suez Canal, right, is not the canal that Darius built, right, in 400-something BCE, right, but the modern uh, canal that was built by the British in the era of their colonization of Africa and Egypt, specifically, right, in the 19th century, precisely during the time that the British have a, a suffocating hold, right, on the, on the, on the, um, on the um, Egyptians and the Africans, after which they give us, after which in the 19th century and as a result of the wars and 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 uh, um, wars of European powers, right? Colonial wars of European powers. It is that you get the map of uh, Africa, right? Um, the way we had we we saw and the way we talked about it, right? And 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 um, and and you know this happens all because of a phenomenon known as scramble for Africa in the 19th century. Scramble, right? As if it's an egg, right? Uh, um, for, for, for Africa, um, between when, between what? Between the European powers. So at any rate, so we know of the Suez Canal as this waterway that was constructed uh, by the British and they called, called it that this was the uh, world's most important waterway, right? And they were right, right? I mean, in the 19th century, they were right because they were, before the construction of the Suez Canal, they were going from London, say, right, or, or Paris or whatnot. They were going across the Cape of Good Hope, my friends. Cape of Good Hope. Southern Africa, hope, as in hope, right? As what we need in these days, right, my friends? And what we should have in these days, yeah? Um, so they they used to go um, they used to go circumambulate Africa they had to right um, which means twelve thousand miles why do you disappear on me oh my god okay uh, here we are which means you know more than twelve um, twelve thousand miles right as opposed to cutting it basically um, basically in half, right, um, and, and making it 7,200. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's 11,000... Uh, yeah, that is, yes, so I'm sorry, never, never mind. 7,200 miles, right, cutting it in half. So you, you have to imagine the time, precious time, right, and the energy, i.e. fuel, right, yeah, that you need in order to undertake this, uh, this, this journey. Well, yeah, um, um, the British and the French, right, came up with the idea that, uh, you know, our ancestors, the Persians, had come up with whatever, um, you know, counted my friends, uh, 2,500 years ago or something like that, okay? So, mm, this is what 
the Suez Canal did actually, right? And this is an aerial sort of um, photograph of the Su uh, Suez Canal. And this is, I'm sorry, this is the Mediterranean, right? Right? And this is the Red Sea. Right? Okay. And this is the this is the the Rias's, um canal, right? From actually from Nile, from uh, <clears throat> now we know where we are, right? On the Nile because here is Memphis, right, my friends? This is Memphis. So to the north of Memphis, right? Uh, they construct a canal that connects it to the Red Sea, and he leaves. He leaves inscriptions, stila, right, of the fact that he is constructed in this canal, right, at different junctures of it, right. Okay, um, and this is just uh, in the mouth of the canal, uh, yeah, um, Port Said and whatnot, right. So okay, the kings that I were uh, that I. I was telling you, so we take over the Arta from here, and then we just put Xerxes, right, my friends, and this is a Xerxes, right? So this is the way the, the Persian Empire expands, right? Under Cyrus the Great, the green area, right? We've already taken care and taken over, taken over Babylonia and Syria and Anatolia and the Ionians, right? Under Cambyses, we go into Egypt, right? And we, yeah, under Darius, we go into Libya and, right? And, and, um, yeah, Thrace and whatnot and further into Caucasus and further into the and the Nile Valley civilization and so on and so forth, right? Um, until Xerxes, right? Until Xerxes' time. Now, so so this is an this is the most expansion that any empire in world history had seen up to that up to that period. So so how did they how did they organize this society? What was the imperial Excuse me. What was the imperial ideology of the Persians, right? Well, in in some of their most ancient uh, uh, sort of hymns to some of their major gods, and we'll talk about um, the Persian notion of um, of uh, of creation. Uh, very very soon, right? Well, what was the Persian ideology? Well, it, this is this is reflected um, actually in one of the ancient sort of spiritual hymns of the Persians, and this 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 part of it, you know, we are getting into my area of areas of expertise, my friends. But this part of it, right? My my husband pointed out to me that you know, remember that in 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 this hymn which is called Mehr. Yes, and it's called the hymn to Mer, who is Mitra, yeah, an Iranian god, Mitra, a very, very important Iranian god, Mitra, right? In there, already there is the notion of the Pers uh, the Iranian notion of king of kings. And that is the, the following. This is the following that the, by 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 the, by the by their own ideology, right? They, or, and by perhaps by force, right, of having to control this expansive um, realm under their control, they decided that they are only the king of the kings. Who are the kings? Well, in this case, the kings are the local kings. Right. In other words, they went in right to this to this you know expanse that stretches from quote unquote Eastern Europe right 
to Pakistan and southern Russia to Sudan, right? A multitude of ethnic groups and forms of social and political organization. Here come the Iranians, right? Here come in the Iranians, and what to what to do what to do with these people, right? The Assyrians more martial, um, more severe in their in their rule, you know. Um, punishment becoming a very important instrument of bringing populations under the control or or um, movement of the population and exile as they did with the people of Judea remember in 700s and 500s right the Iranians come and they conquer all of this right and they say well how should we rule well we will let the kings of various regions remain their kings. We will urge them to make laws, right? Their oral laws into writing. We will, we will, we will uh, free the Jews from Babylonian captivity, right? And we let them go back to their homelands, Judea and 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 Israel, right? But lo and behold, half of them don't want to go back, right? They have already come to these lands, and they have men. They have become some of the more more ancient populations of these lands through their migrations right so as in as in the jews of uh, persia right so so um and and so they they they, they go to um, various populations and they say hi judeans right make your own laws israelis write down your laws right write down your talmud I'm sorry, write down, write down, excuse me, write down your Old Testament. Right? So much so that your Old Testament, right, is put to writing during, right, during the Achaemenid period. In other words, the Achaemenids come and introduce to this population the concept of a um, I mean, they already had, right, from, from uh, um, Babylonians already had Hammurabi, right? And, 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 you know, continuation with that, they had the laws of Babylonians, right? So Cyrus comes and says, yeah, my duke is your god. He establishes your laws together with your jurists and, and, and spiritual leaders. Fine. I will pay respect to those laws. Right. I will. Uh, I I urge you, in fact, to codify your laws so that we know we are dealing with a number of populations. Right. We are dealing with a lot of populations. So we need to have a law of the king that works together with local laws. Right. And so long, well, we need to know what is the codified law of the regions, right? And we know what is the law of the king, and then we will come to a, a modus vivendi, right? Mm. A, 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 a way of living together, right? Yeah, my friends living together, not othering one another, right? Living together, right? And 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 this is this is a conception, this is an imperial conception that is new, right, to this world, right? Everybody who came and went wanted to impose their own laws, right? Not with the Persians, right? The Persians made sure, right, that you have um, you 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 have your own laws in the context of the Persian laws, right? Now, so so what did they do, right? They established satrapies or provinces. Did they divided their lands, right, in many many satrapies? So and you see the ones that are in bold, right, in bold and uh, capital letters are the Persian names, right? The, the ones are just capital letters are the Greek names. So, 
so um so for um for what the Greeks called atopia, right? The the Persians called kush, right? What the Greeks called aegyptus, right? Um, the the Persians called mudraya, and so on and so forth, right? So they established these satrapies, right? Um, in 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 different parts, they they sent to these satrapies Persian. Uh, Persians who were usually connected to the uh, to the um, to the Persian king, right? And these satraps or governors forged ties with the regional ru rulers and cultures. They left their mark, right? In, in in these regions, right? And they observed their cultural traditions as well, right? So they paid respect to their uh, cultural traditions, so to speak, right? In these satrapies, right? Um, so it, all of this was the work of who? What was the work of work of Darius the first, right? Darius, the same Darius who goes to Thrace. Right. Meanwhile, he's doing all this organization, right, um, in his in his empire, right. He and 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 when Cyrus the Great was the one of the founders of uh, um, the Persian Empire, right. Darius, right, becomes the second finder of an empire, the, the organizational structure of which not only remains for the next two centuries, but the, its the organizational, uh, becomes the orga organizational sort of infrastructure, if you will, of a whole, whole of Western Asia for, for centuries and centuries to come, right? Um, and and we will we will talk about it a little bit more, um, okay, uh, so twenty satrapies right each was under the uh, supervision of a Persian satrap or governor who was likely to be related by marriage to the royal fa family and his court was a miniature version of the of the royal court and his position becomes becomes hereditary so that there is no need for sort of milking the provinces, right, as much as you can because um, you are, you know, uh, once your turn is over, somebody else is going to come, right? That is not the case, right? So the Satra families acquired great knowledge about no local conditions, forged ties with the local elite and of course you know nevertheless in spite of all of this right the farther the provinces are from the central administration the more local autonomy they have what do the persians want from them resources of course like all the other uh, imperial uh, imperial um, sort of um, polities right they want access to resources right so they want yeah, these satraps, the most important part of their duty is to collect and send tribute to the king, right? Um, so that it was Darius who prescribed how much precious metal each province what was to con um, contribute. All of this was, was sent to central tre treasury. A good portion of it, right, was spent on, on the upkeep of this empire. Um, so... Uh, uh, some of it was distributed and most was hoarded. You should take it with a grain of salt. But nevertheless, yeah, um, resources were hoarded, right, by the pro by the satrapies maybe, and the, by, by the by the by the um, central administration, right. And as more precious metals were, came out of circulation, the price of gold and silver rose. Right and the provinces, it became extremely difficult for them to pay their um, right, uh, quotas. Right, and that is probably 
um, one of the reasons probably for the for the Ionian revolts, right? Uh, it is not my expertise, so I need to you know I need to look into that, my friends. But um, but um, anyway, um, they but they the the Persians in order to rule this vast empire, yeah. Um, they they constructed and and, and established well maintained, patrolled royal roads right that connected the outlying provinces to the heart of the empire. In between, yeah, in you know every so many kilometers there were way stations at intervals right to receive important tra travelers and for couriers right who are using these same roads right um to to uh, to change horses and 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 uh, um change personnel right carrying official um uh, correspondence right um and and at, at strategic points, the empire, the garrisons of the empire, controlled yeah the safety of people's movements, right? So as I said, the kings um the kings um sort of road right and which connected various other parts of the empire as well together right um this um um was also also created for the, the Persians were the first to create right a, a messenger service right a postal system so to speak right and their motto my friends yeah their motto became the motto of the United States postal system right that neither snow nor rain um, will prevent these these um, you know, um, these uh, messengers from from um, from communicating the messages at you know uh, to uh, various places. Come snow, come hail, come what not, right? Um, so why why and and and, and he established right um, sort of the eyes. And ears of the king, right? An espionage system, right? An espionage system that all these various empires had, right? He came and the Achaemenes came and they systematized it so that the ruler might be aware of what is happening in various parts of his realm, right? Uh, and and these were expeditious um, sort of messengers who used you know the best horses and whatnot to and and since in on these uh, way stations right they would go to these way stations and they change they would change their horses and the messengers would change guards and whatnot right so that they would they would reach their destination. ASAP, my friends, right? So, um, the administrative center of the empire was Susa, right? The ancient capital of Iran in southwestern uh, Iran, uh, of Elam in southwestern Iran. Um, the king traveled with his numerous wives and, and, and children, right? And, and, you know, and, 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 and Cyrus, as the Messiah, right? He is his role is reflected, right, in the Old Testament, and in fact, there are a number of stories about the 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 network of the Iranian Jews, right, um, um, with their brethren in other places in 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 um in Iran, right? So that the book of Esther, for instance, of the Hebrew Bible talks about, right, 
um, the uh, the fact that King Xerxes, right, um, had picked up a beautiful Jewish wife called Esther to be his wife, right, and, and the courageous eighth Esther, we are told, later saved Jewish uh, people from a plot to massacre them, um, and and um, we will get to the Persian influence. Excuse me, the Iranian Semitic sort of traditions coming together in the religious sphere, right? Um, later, right? Um, the Iranian tradition. Coming, um, coming into contact with the Semitic tradition. In this case, the Hebrews and the uh, and the Christians, right? And on this side, you have your Magi, right? Who are already running around, right? leaving their, their, their footmarks, right, with these satrapies, amongst these satrapies, right? Anyway, um, okay, uh, now Greek sources portray uh, Persian women as, as vicious intriguers. In fact, unlike the Greek women, and I would like you to read, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about women as, as, a, as, a, as a token 10-minute thingy, but just to say that the role and the function and the rights and responsibilities of Persian women who could, uh, you know, who could possess substantial property, were politically influential, traveled, they were, and they were um, prominent in, in pub, on public occasions and so, and so forth. This, 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 their, 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 um, roles and responsibilities and rights were much much different than the um, than the Greek woman. So my soul that I was really see uh, we will come to to and and women were of course used throughout history right as 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 ways of um, connecting royal forging royal connections and as uh, and and and, and uh, rulerships connections and uh, and um, so on and, and and so on and so forth right so that for instance when alexander comes and destroys the Achaemenid empire that was already gaining losing its strength because of the issue economic issues that we talked about comes and conquers um, the Achaemenid Empire and re-establishes basically the Achaemenid Empire and its borders, right, from 330, 30s to 310s, right? Um, he and his generals, all of his generals, right, come to marry Iranian women, right? Um, so, so Alexander the Great marries the daughter of Cyrus the Great, right, Roxana, and here the romantic picture of it in the Italian Baroque style, you know, like really flowery and having a lot of movement and whatnot, right, and the Baroque artist, Italian artist, Pietro Rotari in the middle of the 18th century, right, romantically looking back at their ancestor Alexander the Great, right, and his marriage to the daughter of a Persian empire, right. So this is then, then, then Darius, right, um, in Parsa establishes, establishes a ceremonial capital, right, a ceremonial capital that he uses right um on 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 important occasions right on 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 ascensions to king, uh, uh, of Achaemenes to kingship on persian new year on on uh, uh, occasions of peace or declarations of various kinds and whatnot right and oh yeah here is some tourists in 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 uh, 
in Persepolis circa 1960s, right? Uh, yeah, some tourists, including my family. This is my little sister, my little brother, my mommy, my daddy, and this is 1960s, my, my friends, right? My dad with the hat, my late dad with the hat, right? They had gone, and this is another picture of them, they had gone to visit Persepolis, and we have, my, you know, my father took us there uh, over and over again, right? But uh, to know what is our heritage, right? To know what is our cultural heritage, what is what, what you should know, right, about your histories, right? At any rate, so this is a, the, a, this is a, the, the, the remains of the ruins of, of Persepolis, which um, we know that Alexander the Great or the Accursed, right? What is for you democracy is not democracy for me, right? And uh, depends on the eye of the viewer, right? And uh, when he uh, conquered um, Achaemenid Empire, he is said to have put fire, set fire to Persepolis as as a, a in a in a drunken um, sort of um, sort of moment, right? And so uh, here is the ruins of it, right? And here is Cyrus the Great, I was taking this from uh, Vicky, liberating, right, the Jews from Babylonian, Babylonian exile, telling them to go back, right, to Israel and build your temple. Right, rebuild your temple. The, the, the temple that had been destroyed by the Assyrians, right? When they brought you into this land. If you want, go back. Re, you know, um, uh, work under your own rules, and so on and so forth, and, and canonize your rules, right? And, uh, and then we come to get the Old Testament as a result of it. Right, my friends, I'm going to stop here, uh, my friends, and I'm going to pick it up um, one more small session and we will be done with our module fourth as well. Uh, I bid you farewell wherever you are until the next session. Cheerios, my friends.